Okay, everyone, places, places. The city of Monstropolis has got to be hard to maintain, what with it being powered by children's screams and monsters having to scare them every day through their closet doors to get them. Luckily, they have Mike and Sully, the best scare team at Monsters, Inc. Sully's been the top month scarer for several months and he's about to get it again, but Mike forgot to do his paperwork. So while Sully fills in for him, he notices a lone door in the workplace. Sully checks it out and is scared himself to see a child in his world. Till now, children were thought to be toxic, but Boo, which is what Sully calls her, dispels that myth and Sully grows pretty fond of her, which is too bad because she's got to go home. But Sully's arch rival Randall has other plans for her. Will Mike and Sully be able to get her home safely? Ah, Pixar movies, always gorgeous, always starring great actors, and always clever. I think even the most hardened horror fan couldn't hate you, especially if you have monsters. Smart and clever are definitely words I would use to describe Pixar, but I think this applies most to Monsters, Inc. It goes without saying that Pixar movies are always clever, but Monsters, Inc. is especially. I may be biased because, as you may know, I'm a bit of a horror fan. But the building blocks of society in Monstropolis are very unique and clever. I thought using children's screams as the electricity of the city and setting up the Monsters Inc. plant with doors for the monsters to sneak through to scare them was brilliant. And this leads to its ending, which is not only a good resolution, but is smart and puts monsters on the fast track for kids to appreciate, which is where I've always wanted monsters to be. On top of the main premise of the movie, the intelligence can be found at the very beginning of the film as well. When Mike and Sully walk to work, where the don't walk sign actually says don't stalk. And the newspaper is called the Monstropolis Horn. These clever gags populate the movie entirely. And as if you needed any more reason to see Monsters, Inc., there are hundreds of unique monsters. You're bound to pick a favorite. It's also gorgeous, colorful, bright, and fun. Not to mention, John Goodman and Billy Crystal play Sully and Mike, respectively, and I can't think of a better combo for their dynamic. And Steve Buscemi as Randall is the perfect villain. I guess the only gripe I have is that one of the songs in the movie sounds a lot like another Pixar movie's main theme, Up. I couldn't stop thinking of Up when I heard it, but I don't think that this is enough of a gripe to really ruin the film. I doubt most viewers will even notice it. Hey, take it from a biased fan of monsters like me. This movie's great, especially for its cleverness. Especially for maybe horror fans looking to get their kids into the genre. Alright, let's get a move on, people. We are on in seven, six, five. Coming online. On November 2nd, the creators of Toy Story. Good morning, fellas. Hey, what's shaking, bacon? Did you lose weight or a limb? Take you into the world behind your closet door. Roz, you're looking fabulous today. Is that a new haircut? New makeup. You've had a lift. You've had a tuck. You've had something. We've always been afraid monsters were there. Scary feet, scary feet, scary feet. Oh, the kids awake. Waiting to scare us. Twins! But what we didn't know is that we scared them. What happened? The kid almost touched me. You can't touch a child. They're toxic. If a kid ever got through one of our doors, the results would be catastrophic. Okay. Walt Disney Pictures presents... Kitty! The thing is a killing machine! A Pixar Animation Studios film. Confirmed or denied. 
not something of a child. Let's keep it. I always wanted a pet. That you kill me! E <laughs> five, four. What are you doing? Monsters Incorporated. It's a musical. Put that thing back where it came from, or so help me. So help me, so help me, and cut. <laughs> All right, guys, that's a wrap. Oops.